I like architecture to be a crystal clear, sculptural, proud thing. It's heroic and amazing and radiant. It's such a beautiful symbol of what it did, which was transform Sydney. He never compromised. He really pursued excellence. He was uh, a star architect on the one hand, but on the other hand, he had a very uh, strong social commitment. When he spoke about his mission in life, which is probably all he ever spoke about, <laughs> I was sure that that was going to become my mission too. I've built houses for people who worked for the water board and people who were a fireman and a sign writer. And I always felt that to be a challenge to build the house as I did in the 50s for 2,000 pounds. If somebody wants this kind of thing, they're entitled to have it and it's my duty to make it possible. His whole career started off fighting councils to get his modern designs approved. Even though it was ego-driven, he did fight for what he believed to be right. We are not to have the designer of this opera house complete the building. This is tragic, I feel, because this opera house is something that has made literally world history. People say a lot of nasty things about Bruce Point Tower. The fact is that I think it's one of my best buildings. Now you're virtually saying their opinion is not as good as yours. Well, they're not trained in the subject. By the 1960s, he's moving into mass and off-form concrete, brick. By the 70s, he's starting to explore curvilinear forms. Harry Seidler's international reputation was growing. In Harry's work, sitting on that corner, and it's a wonderful piece of architecture that has quite a sculptural quality. It's a work of art. He was very much, I think, aware of the urban importance of public spaces. He is a mainstream modernist. He's one of the great mainstream uh, modernists. There is no greater satisfaction, I think, for an architect, uh, however much he may think his building is beautiful, but to see others genuinely enjoy using it. In that way, his pleasure is multiplied. Thank you.